Right. Right, 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 right. I brought my laptop in with me on this one because I can't do it off the cuff because I've got a lot to talk about, a lot to talk about, and I'm very passionate about this topic. And you're going to start to understand why. So, the PSTN switch off or ISDN cease or ISDN switch off or the BT switch off. There's so many phrases around this topic. And in the article, I give an overview of all the different phrases and how many times they get searched monthly on Google to give you an understanding of all the different dialect around this topic, because it's huge. But where do we begin? We need to go back to understand why we're switching off this service and all the questions around it. And we begin with understanding the traditional telephone network. So you've got three types of lines within the traditional telephony space. You've got PSDN, ISDN2, and ISDN30. Now, back in the day, before we had any infrastructure around the UK, I won't say a date because I haven't got a clue, but we wanted to make a call. Some chap called Alexandra Bell was like, right, we need to be able to contact each other, and I figured out how we can do it. We can do it through cables. Now, jump forward, we started as a nation to roll out copper cable all around the UK, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of miles to connect homes and businesses together to be able to make a call. So a telephone line will go from some sort of network into your home so then you can receive and transmit data to make a telephone call. And that's how it worked for decades. Jump further forward, broadband was invented and we needed to be able to transmit a signal to get ourselves out into the internet. How are we gonna do that? Because it needs to run over a cable into the telephone network. Let's use the infrastructure we already have to be able to connect to the internet. You will remember back in the day, you would have a filter that goes into your open reach socket on the wall. One was for the telephone and one was for your broadband. Even for before that, there wasn't such things and it was dial up and it was all very complicated. You couldn't be on the phone at the same time as your broadband connection and everything else. So that's a traditional telephone network. So what is PSDN? PSDN is one line. It's a single line. It's the most commonly used line that goes into your home. It's a single line that comes from the telegraph pole into your home through the wall onto a little open reach socket. And what that allows you to do is to make one telephone call and it will give you access to broadband as well if you haven't got full fiber. That is PSTN, one line. Businesses will use it as well, but you'll understand on the other products why it's not the most popular one if you're a growing company. So next off, we have ISDN2. ISDN2 is two single lines essentially to a degree. They come in pairs. They allow you to have two lines, which means two calls at the same time. So Sandra on reception is making an outbound call about your car that you're booking in for an MOT. Another call can still come in because there's two lines available. You can have two concurrent calls. And ISDN2 comes in pairs. So if you have eight pairs, you've got 16 lines. Now, you've also got ISDN30, which is like ISDN2, but it comes in blocks of 30. So you have 30 lines at a time for much larger businesses. A lot of these services are now obsolete because we have things like VoIP and SIP, which we're going to come into. So VoIP or Voice Over Internet Protocol, pause so I can check that's correct. That is correct. Is very quickly and very essentially a internet call. So the call doesn't need to tra travel over that traditional copper infrastructure that we laid God knows how many decades ago. It can travel over the internet. Now, when you hear VoIP, there's different aspects of it. So you as a home user, you may hear your ISP talking about, would you like a digital landline or a landline replacement? What they're saying is, would you like a landline service that would dial out over the internet? And that's because they're providing a full fiber service and full fiber doesn't allow you to have access to the traditional telephony network because there's no copper involved. It's full fiber, it's brand new. Calls don't travel over fiber, only internet does. Jump back. So what ISPs are doing now is as they're putting full fiber in, they need to upgrade you to a voice service that actually works because the infrastructure isn't there. And the way they can do that is with a VoIP solution. Now, you may still have a traditional handset at your home, but you no longer plug it into an open reach socket. You plug it into the back of your router, which will have a converter to take that traditional call to the internet, or you'll have an external converter which you plug your handset into, which give you access to the internet. Now for businesses, 
Voight's been around a lot longer. You're more used to the term, or at least we hope you would be. So VoIP for you is a bit more comfortable. VoIP allows you to have all of those clever features that you could have had on your on-site PBX, but for a much lower cost. And nine times out of 10, the calls are included and so are lots of the features like call recording and everything else. So VoIP is far, far, far more familiar and you've been making calls over the internet, hopefully for a couple of years now. If you haven't and you haven't upgraded yet, we'll come to that in the end actually. Right, so then what is SIP? SIP is essentially an invisible cable which allows your PBX to gain access to internet calls. That SIP could also be going into a cloud-based PBX. So a PBX being that chunky piece of equipment that a business has sat in their comms room, which all the telephones plug into and it allows you to do all those clever features like IVR menus and everything else. Well, nowadays, that actual chunky piece of kit sits in a cloud in a data center somewhere and you have different types, multi-tenanted or your own like 3CX. I'm not gonna go into that today. But we need to allow that piece of equipment, whether it's in the cloud or if it's on site, to gain access to internet calls, and SIP does exactly that. It's like VoIP, but it's the operation in the background that actually gets those calls to the internet. It takes it from a traditional network, and it allows you to get into the internet and then come back onto a traditional network as well. Very, very clever stuff. So now we have a basic understanding of the traditional telephone network and VoIP and SIP. Let's start to talk about the switch off. First, let's understand when the switch off was first announced. In 2017, OpenReach announced they were gonna be switching off traditional services. It completely makes sense. We are pushing for a full fiber Britain, which means everybody's gonna have full fiber infrastructure coming into their home or their business. There will be no copper network, so there wouldn't be able to be any traditional voice calls anyway. So switching that service off completely makes sense. Switching off the PSDN, the ISDN2 and the ISDN3, absolutely, you should do it. Now, the concerns within the industry are around the education to you, the listener or the reader. Are you aware of these services switching off? Or do you have the education to understand it's a benefit to you as a business or as a home? if you're gonna use the telephone to have internet-based calls. It's much more cost-effective to have VoIP. It's much more feature-rich to have a VoIP solution. It's much more easier to install and maintain. It's all cloud-based. It's a benefit for you to come off of these traditional services. So we understand why they're doing it. The worry for resellers or people that sell voice services is how uneducated the nation is about it. More needs to be done. And really that needs to sit with open reach. Recently on a podcast, I had David Yates and he had a really good point. When we switched from a traditional TV service to a digital TV service, the government launched a huge campaign. It was in the press, it was on the telly or the radio. I don't know if there was TV back then, which is very bad. I hope that doesn't make me come across poorly. But there was a huge campaign and lots of funds put in to educate the nation on exactly what they needed to do. They needed to do some sort of process to put some cables here and there to give you access to the new digital TV. Why aren't we seeing that now? Why aren't we seeing OpenReach supply funds to the resellers and the ISPs to support campaigns to educate the nation? Why aren't the government setting aside any funds to do exactly that? I'm very positive around their Project Gigabit scheme where they've set aside five billion pounds to help rural locations get full fibre. Why can't we have a piece of that pie to educate the nation on this huge change? I hope this short video has given you a rough overview of exactly what's happening in 2025. I will caveat all of this with, it's very more than likely that they're gonna push 2025 back. And it's very, very likely that it's all gonna be staggered. There's not gonna be a hard switch off. Bear in mind, we're not the, not the first country to do this. Germany has been through the same thing and they're doing very well. Look at the cars that come out of that country and the beer. So if you found this helpful, please do follow us along on our social media platforms, YouTube, TikTok, LinkedIn, and Instagram where we are trying to do our bit to educate the nation on the new full fiber revolution and of course all these other bits in between. Cheers.